Hi, this is Jim, and I'm the New Hampshire Rock Guy, and we're out on another one of my mining adventures. Wow, look at this spar here. It's just falling out of the mine walls, and there's so much more to see. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Feel all six sides of the tourmaline crystal. What would be west into the Connecticut River Valley and the mountains of Vermont. World-class barrel crystals, both aquamarine and golden. If you look hard enough, you'll find something that's basic. Yeah. Get ready for a fantastic journey of this incredible mine. I'm going to get out and hopefully other people are going to stay in their cars if I talk to them. But how are you going to video? Do you need to video everything? Um, maybe I'd be better off. Yeah, we'll all get out. This is, uh, there was a sinkhole here. So they came and, and, uh, and fixed the sinkhole. So what's this? Wow, well, it's uh, iron. Just iron. iron. Iron coating, you know, if it was an iron nodule, it'd be heavier. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you can tell by that, huh? Down, so, down. how long have you guys been <laughs> always looking at the ground? Yeah, sorry. Four years. Four? Yeah. That's it? God, I feel like I've known you for eight. <laughs> it's yeah. really only the four. All right, so. <laughs> Come on, all of us. Oh, look at that. That's one right there. Skipper's always on another page. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He parked on the opposite oh. side of the road. Oh. <laughs> Micah, yeah. Well, if if you um, if you look up in this uh, face, and it's been a while since I've done it, you can climb up the face. You don't have to. But um, so this is a this was a World World War II mica mine. Okay, so we were buying mica before World War II. And I'm, again, I'm just going to make up some relative numbers. Do I have your attention? Are you looking at something? Yeah, you know, it's okay. We're looking at rock. Uh, too you know many facts. Jim. Too many figures. <laughs> yeah. I just want to climb it. Anyway, <laughs> all right, so listen up. We were buying mica before World War II from um, India and Brazil. And when World War II happened, the U boats were shooting down the shipments. And mica was so critical to the war effort. Again, almost like beryllium, mica is used in every single aircraft, uh, carrier, uh, boat, ship, doesn't matter. It's in it all. Anything that has a high um, output engine, um, anything that's combusting <laughs> fuels and, and things is using mica for that window to be able to, to, to see how clean things are burning without having to go in, um, so on and so forth. So that's just the beginning of the uses. So because of this, uh, they were paying uh, in the order of $2.50 a ton for mica, but they paid the uh, keen area miners $12 a ton. So huge, huge per, uh, percentage, great, great, huge, uh, da, 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 what am I saying? A much greater percentage. And this is the result of one of those, okay? Now, when I was a kid, you'd all be standing in a hole, okay? When I was a kid, you drove down this road. This was the one place you didn't want to uh, nod off and, and come because it was not even a guardrail. It was just a hole filled really? with water, okay? This is what's left of the hole filled with water. It has been filled in, it has been capped, and the water is still there underground. There was a sinkhole here recently, so if you see this disturbed area, oh, it's boy. the uh, road, road agent or somebody came and tried to fill in the sinkhole. So this was the entrance to the mine, cool. okay? And remember what I said about the mines down there, they went in, in this direction, right? 
So <clears throat> the the winch and the operator for um, uh, getting things in and out of the mine would sit up on the top here, and there's a foundation that can be seen. So, but the amazing thing, this is starts the, the hollows portion of our tour, the hollows of southwestern New Hampshire. So this mine went down, and the mica vein went down the road and up the road, just in direction. So the tunnel under this road doesn't just go under it, it goes that way. So it's hollow that way for four levels deep. The last levels end up in Dennis Molesky's yard. The, there's another yeah. one of these, a, 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 a cement cistern that constantly outpours water and it's over there. It would be a great hydrothermal um, uh, heating solution. Oh. So, so like what happened into here an geologically is that when the magma was still um, forming, there was a giant fold in the earth. And, and the earth folded over, and it made the purest seam of mica in all 100 mines. Nothing had purer mica than here. And it was eight feet thick, and again, it ran up and down. Um, and so it was an extreme, this was the most successful mica mine in World War II. And um, I probably have production records someplace. But anyway. Um, so they mined it until how much of it was gone? Like. I'm sorry, say it again? They mine it until it's gone, or do they have to well, leave a certain percentage left no, in the earth? No, great question, great question. When you get down to this fourth level, it, so there's 15 feet between levels, about, and um, so it, you know, it's not hundreds of feet down, but you get to a level where the water coming in is no longer ep economical to get out. That's what ceases the mining operations all around here. Oh. So you can the water in water infill just won't let you. The natural springs. You know, you're, you're paying too much to get it out. So do you so think? If we kept um, pumping the water out, no. we could get more mica. What? We kept pumping the water out, we could get more mica. You oh well, Mi you mica water. That, you know, <laughs> they had to leave 15 feet. So yeah, in between every one of these tunnels is 15 feet of pure mica. <laughs> so I mean, um, I was going to ask. I know. Um, is it a possibility, considering there's a sunken volcano in like the Osby Mountains? Yeah. Oh, yeah so it's like, like yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, so most of New Hampshire is really like metamorphic uh, no, in most nature. No, New Hampshire is, is volcanic or igneous. Igneous, okay. For, Vermont is more, meta well, excuse me, there's a lot of metamorphosis that happens here as well. But, not so the only two uh, types of rock formation is igneous from molten activity yep. and sedimentary. Okay. Or you know, real slow, laying down, you know, layer upon layer, and you get your sandstones and things like that. But then, if you take sandstone and you apply heat and pressure, it becomes marble. Now, marble is metamorphic. Right? Oh wow! So there is, there are metamorphic rocks throughout New Hampshire, but uh, the the Connecticut River is a straight dividing line between. It's night and day, and and I I've, I've uh, lectured all over. And uh, one gentleman came up after the lectures, and he was a grave digger. And he goes, oh, I know the difference between New Hampshire and Vermont. It's totally different, just digging graves. Yeah, it's just, a, it's like, yeah, it is like night and day. <laughs> I thought that was a great testimony. Yeah. All right. So, um, thank you, Jim. Historically, psst, shh, the museum wanted to buy this place. It was only $11,000, and we didn't get to buy it because of a meddling neighbor. Yeah. Who will go nameless. <laughs> How many acres comes for eleven thousand? What? How many acres for eleven thousand? Ten. What? These this, are all ten acre lots. Is it still here. for sale? Yeah, can we have a live bid right now? Is it still for sale? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the, the, another neighbor convinced this neighbor to spend her forty thousand, which I bid it up to forty thousand, to buy it. Oh. And she wants it for peace and quiet. You can't walk on this, we can't prospect on this, we can't oh. trespass on this, because she needs her peace and quiet. We can go I'm back sorry, back. I'm not a, in agreement with that, but <laughs> I know I'm on film. And excuse me, the, the no trespassing signs used to be here, but they're not here anymore. I don't see them, but it, it, this is off limits. But anyway, just amazing history. We drive by it all the time. How many people have driven down this road and had no idea there was hollow tunnels, right? Yeah, I know I wondered why it's the mine road. You probably told me, but I forgot from all of my party days. Um, I was going to ask, like, lava tubes and tunnels, <laughs> do they exist in this area? No. Yeah, it could no? be supporting a, a certain amount of energy on the planet, and that's why it's, she's, like, almost a protector of the 
you know, if people started to go in and mine it again, maybe it's like, I know we love stones and stuff, but they all have energy and they all serve. Yeah, and so, I that. you know. People own their little rolling mountains with well, their yeah, property exactly. in Maine. Yeah, they like it because yeah, they yeah, have a certain, there's like, there's energy there's they're attracted to yeah. in that area. Yeah. <laughs> so this is all just filled. All right. I want to go to these tunnels. Do they connect to the inner earth? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in, uh, in Ossipi, Let's go in them. In Ossipi, in the old dormant volcano, you can walk right into the epicenter. Of the volcano? Yeah. yeah. You can yeah. literally walk right in. People I don't know how fantastic it is or anything, but there's apparently that whole, it wiped out and carved the whole um, uh, Lake Winnipesaukee and further north in the Ossipi mountain range was created from a super volcano. So, I don't know. I haven't been there yet. That's on my to-do list. <laughs> uh, Mount Ossipi. And there's a volcanic epicenter. I think that's what it's called. The epicenter. Where the tube, like in the mid, very center of the volcano. It's dormant now, but... Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, right, Just take the scenic route around, around through hey, yeah. Laconia, yeah. Meredith, and... So what kind of in Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you're talking about.